Yeah, so we're going to quickly talk about race for the top four and then we're going to talk about the FA Cup previews. So it looks like the top four is um, hoying up. You've got uh, Chelsea at the top, I think two points. You've got Leicester and C- Leicester City and Man United hot on their tail. You've mm. got Tottenham winning games. Wolves yeah. have actually been losing a lot of games. Where, where, where what do you think is going on? We're at the top by four points, but they have a game in hand. So Yeah. So um, everybody's been going at Lampard hard. Ah. The, I saw the stoppage time TV, obviously, I yeah, watched them, and the guy on there who was wearing a mask at home <laughs> um, was talking about the fact that he thinks Lampard is inept, basically, that he's very reactive manager. You only need to come off the bench and play well to get another game. He doesn't know what he's doing. He's mm. only getting let off because you haven't made any transfers. As a Chelsea mm. fan, how do you feel about that? Yeah, I mean, I, I, I understand his frustration because obviously in the media, there's like, um, there's a... Uh, people don't really want to criticise him. You, you, you can see that people are giving him the benefit of the doubt. He's a young manager, mm-hmm. only second year in management. Uh, you know, Chelsea, big club, tough club to, to manage at the best of times and stuff. So I, I can understand his frustration, you know, because if, if you don't see your manager getting criticised, then you might end up going over the top, which is why I think he did, ultimately. Um, I, no, I, I, think, I think for the most part, I think uh, uh, a, lot, a lot of the things that uh, are the issues with the club right now are exactly what the fans were saying at the beginning of last year. So why they're surprised and why they thought Lampard would come in and all of a sudden the defence would be amazing and... All the midfielders will be scoring goals and the attack will just be that. And that's after we lose uh, the guy who provided more than 50% of our uh, goal involvement. Uh, what about Luis as well? Does that year. count? David, lead, leadership of David Luiz. Like, say what you want to Gary say. Gary Cahill? You know, say what you, yeah, Gary Cahill behind the scenes. Say what you want to say about David Luiz's uh, defensive faults. But he does, he does bring leadership to the team. Um, he, does, he, does, he has stepped up for us in big moments and... Uh, Obviously, just like all round passing ability from the back, which is a big part of the game, like free the fullbacks and get them up wide and stuff. So, no, nah, I, think, I think the guy was being very, very harsh on uh, Lampard. I, th- I think what he said was that uh, Lampard's a very reactive manager. Yeah. And is that what he said? Like, that, that's what he said, that, that basically Lampard doesn't know what like, his formation is. Like, he, he'll, he'll play one thing and then, and then if he changes it, then if the formation works, then that's the formation he'll be next. Like, there's no real uh, strategy to it, but. Anybody's watching. He also your... said none of the players improved have improved at all. No one yeah. has improved other than Yeah, I, I think that's demonstrably false. First of all, I, I don't even like this whole idea of uh, um, manager improving players anyway because it's, it's, it's almost impossible to quantify. Like some, some players were always going to get better. Um, some played in a different position. That's why they're better than the last time. Um, some are just of that age. Some players decide for themselves. And yeah, some managers do improve players and uh, give, give them confidence. But it's, unless the player comes out and says, oh, this is what this guy did to my game and did this and he made me this and he made me think a different way. I don't know. I don't like to go down that route. Like, oh, he's improving. He's improving the player. I, I, think, I think, yeah, 100%. I have no problem criticising him. There's a lot of stuff I don't like that he does. Hmm. But I am fair. It's not just about transfers. He's a young manager, but not just about that as well. I think, for me, the judge of a manager is after he gets his players in. Like when I start seeing where he's trying to go and when they really feel like they're backing. Because if you come into a team where, you know, you literally can't make any transfers, you can't even bring anyone in that's like you seem as your sort of style. So now you've got yeah. players that you don't necessarily like or whatever, mm-hmm. and you're forced to use because they might be of a certain quality. And mm-hmm. the players that you might even like in your squad are just not of a certain quality. So mm-hmm. it's, it's very tough to criticise a manager who's third right now. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. And had no transfers along the way. So, but I do believe he should be criticised game to game. No yeah. doubt, 100%. Isn't it? It and was, he it needs was, to it was, improve. It, it, was yeah. the same, it was the same last year. Like, they criticised uh, uh, Sarri. Sarri. Stop, yeah. So, we, we got to... But wait, when you actually look back on the season, uh, cup final against, against C, yeah. went to penalties, unlucky, you know. Yeah. They've gone either way. Could have won that. Um, finished third in the league. Um, obviously helped by everybody's collapse at the end, but still got yeah. the job done. Um, I always think, I always think it's more the second season. If they do the job the first season or they don't, whatever, mm. I think it's more the second season because the second season is really when you when the team starts to accept your identity fully a lot of the time. Mm. Do you know what I'm saying? Mm. So it's, all, it's, all, it's also giving you a couple of transfer windows where you can actually get the players in that you want. Yeah, you know I mean, and actually mm. 
build a team that they So you know I mean? So that's your identity. I see that's your identity. So mm-hmm. I do believe when Werner comes in, obviously Havertz, Havertz is probably linked to come in. Zayek's linked. Um, Al- 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 Alaba's Zayek's linked. So, yeah. yeah. Mm-hmm. He obviously knows himself that he'll have to improve. And the players know that if they want to stay in the long term at Chelsea, they'll have to improve. So I yeah. judge it more based on next season. I was more disappointed mm-hmm. with Emery this season than I was last season because yeah. the first season it was always uh, most 99% of the time it's harder than yeah. the second but also um, fans, yeah. fans, fans don't need to be worried about that because Chelsea, Chelsea is a sacking club like trust me like mm. if, you're, if you're not doing the business come second day you're ghost like it doesn't matter whether you're last bro or, look Sarri came third won Europa Cup got into the yeah. Champions League two ways and, and, and they sacking, told him so, so uh, not, don't, don't get it doesn't matter what the media is saying the pressure is on uh, at mm-hmm. the bridge um, yeah, so we got. Let's talk about the preview there. Um, so you got Chelsea, Man United, which to me is the more exciting game mm. because I think they're much closer in quality. And the whole season, it's always constantly. I've seen from everyone who's better, who's got better squad: Chelsea, Man United, Man United, Chelsea, Chelsea, Man United. So it's now really like a, the you know kind of like you guys butting heads. Mm. I would say Man United got the advantage; they beat you majority of the times when you guys have come up against each other. They're probably in better form. I think they got a better first eleven than you guys. Yeah. I think overall squad wise, you're better than them though. You know what I'm mm. saying? Like, I think you have more filling players. So like, you know, if they're Pogba goals, I think Fred is it's not close compared to if you have like, you know, um Cover Hitch and Jorginho and, and um Kante, like a replacement for Kante being Cover Hitch is much closer in quality than you know Fred to yeah. uh Pogba, though Fred has been in good form. It's very exciting. I think Lampard is the underdog in this. I think Chelsea are the underdog, so I'm excited to see what you do. The only thing I want to watch Chelsea these days, the second half season, you guys have been very boring, man. <laughs> it's very, very boring football. But, but who hasn't? It's very boring. Apart from Man City, who hasn't? Every, everybody's been boring mm. pretty much, you know what I mean? Everybody's just trying no, to... No, no, I think Man United have been good, man. Oh, yeah, Man United have been good, yeah. But, but been good. Their, their run has been, a, you know, it's been a bit easy. Let's play like that. I would say that this team is not boring. There's a lot of things that happen in the game, but it's not boring. No. <laughs> but I, I think I think Man United are favourites. I think that they have goals everywhere at the moment. You know, Bruno Fernandes can't stop scoring. Um, Greenwood can't stop scoring. Martial can't stop scoring. Rashford mm-hmm. can't stop stor- scoring. And I do think a lot of the criticisms from Man United have been, they haven't really faced anyone. You know what I'm saying? They're, they're whacking over teams that they expected to beat. So if it's from a Man United point of view, mm-hmm. Solskjaer, though, mm-hmm. I do think he's very underrated as a big game manager, which I think he is. I think he's yeah. shown himself as he's a better big game manager than he probably is a small game manager. Mm-hmm. You know, so he'll be up for this game. You know, yeah. and, well, um, you know, yeah. yeah, for me, it's, it's uh, yeah. you know, the, the weekend should tell us a lot in terms but, of like, where, where this squad is at. Yeah. You know? But at the same time, they, you both want Champions League. So I think that heavily rotates the squad. And the lucky thing is that you guys have got more of a rotation, rotation squad than they have, which you guys have shown all season by not playing anybody in two games. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? So you guys are able to rotate. I think tomorrow you might get a game out here. Yeah. I think. I, I, uh, I, 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 yeah. I, obviously, the, we played them three times this season. They, they beat us all three times. Yeah. Um, bullied us, really. A lot, a lot of those games. That, that's what I, mm-hmm. I tend to remember in terms of like, I thought the first, yeah, game, first game was... You know, but I'm not even talking about terms of the, the, the score. Because I thought we actually played very well in that game, but, you know, lost 4-0 or whatever. But I'm just talking about, like, the physicality uh, in the game. That's where they seem to have had the upper side when it, when it comes to... Um, they have the bigger players. Our clashes, yeah. Just, just, yeah, just more physical players, more rough. Um, but I, I think in terms of tactics, will be very important on Saturday. Yeah, I, I, because... I think it, it, it evens itself out. Yeah, they have the better, like you said, they have the better starting lineup and we have the better yeah. squad. So I think on, on that sense, it's, it's equal. So I, th- I think the, the, the tactical approach of the managers is what's going to win the game, especially, you know, neutral venue, things on the line. It could go to extra time. So it's, it's going to be a very methodical... Uh, yeah, yeah. I, th- I think Agarlo's going to get a start. I think he'll play. I think they want to rotate because they want top four. He's been hot in the FA Cup, four goals in five games. You know he's dying to get a run up. Yeah. I won't lie, I fancy it though. I, I don't. I'm not. I'm not going into this. Even though we've lost to them three times, I'm not going into this scared. I'm. I'm. I'm it's on. weird because. Yeah. 
an FA Cup for both managers cements you guys for the season. I think it cements Solskjaer into the job because even though he's doing well, I don't think he's cemented in the club. I don't think all the all the fans at Man United want him there. Mm-hmm. I don't think all the consensus from the pundits want him there. I mm-hmm. still think he's not cemented in the job. I think if he was to get top four and win the FA Cup, that's cemented. Like he's done. Like he's sorted. Mm-hmm. Like he's not. He doesn't have to worry. Same with Lampard as well. For, uh, uh, FA Cup. It's a great season for Lampard. It goes from just being eh, to a great season, winning the FA mm-hmm. Cup, especially as a manager in his second official um, season in football with no transfers. The whole story, no transfers, and I carry the team to win the FA Cup, you know. You know, and I think that's immense. And so I think low-key, though they won't act like it, they both badly won the FA Cup. It's both, it's a massive achievement for them both. Mm-hmm. You know, and on the other side, we've got Man City, Arsenal. Yeah. It's Arteta versus Guardiola again. You know, Arteta lost last time through a massive mistake from Louise as well as just an overall poor game where Man City dominated. Arsenal have literally nothing to play for. So this game is actually massive to Arsenal. But at the same time, Man City have nothing to play for. So this game is also massive for them as well. It's probably, they're both probably the wrong matchup because they probably want to face the other teams who less want it more than they want top four. Um, Arsenal will be on a high because they beat Liverpool during the week. (sighs) Man City have been winning recently. I fancy Man City, of course, but Never say never, Arsenal are the best FA Cup team. Mm. You know, they do have an excellent record in the FA Cup. They have beat Man City in the FA Cup before, in the semi final, actually, uh, three years ago when we won it. Um, I don't see much rotation, but he did bench Aubameyang, so he's very serious about it. I think Aubameyang will start. I, th- I think Aubameyang <laughs> is key to the game. You know, mm. Any, anytime when I, I watch a game and Aubameyang has very few chances, I always think you guys are going to lose. I think I think him him getting loads of chances is is especially in like uh, I guess the top of opponents or whatever. There's a difference between you winning and not winning. Yeah. So what do you do? You think Lacazette? Do you think Lacazette? Um, I think Lacazette. I think, I think Lacazette's good, good for. I think he's good for a goal, but uh-huh. I think if you if you can get both of them in the game, I think it makes yeah. a massive difference. Yeah, you know I mean, but if if I if I uh-huh. watch seventy minutes and Aubameyang has hardly been involved, or whatever on the yeah. left, like that, I'm I'm really thinking. Nah, this this is not going to turn out well. Mm. I think I think there's free strike. Well, obviously, yeah, there, are too, yeah. there are too many big games I've seen where, you know, he's been isolated tactically. Yeah. I think mean, Kevin's massive for this game. Of course, Kevin is massive for this game. Mm. Kevin kind of dictates um, uh, what's called whether whether you know whether Man City play well a lot of the time. I think Sterling has found a route of scoring against Arsenal recently mm. quite a lot. They 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 have much more massive Arsenal. Yeah. Also, I think that this um, fancy team they have a weakness through the centre of the defence. Yeah. Like, I think yeah. I think you're better off targeting. Like, I think if you put Bamian on the right against Kyle Walker, you know he matches him for pace. You know, so it's going to be on the left. On the left for Bamian. You mean on the left? On, on the left, left right? Yeah, it's going to it's going it, to he's up against Kyle Walker, who's who can match him for pace all day. So it's it's tough. So so I, predictions. I don't know whether I would, I would go with more predictions. Uh, two of I'm giving you predictions. Yeah. Man City, Chelsea. Who are you going for? Man City, Arsenal, you mean? I mean, Man City. No, I mean, uh, let's start with United, Chelsea. Yeah. United, Chelsea. I'm going Chelsea 2 1. There's no replay in it. It's just straight. No. Nope. That's the end of the day. I want Chelsea to win, you know, but I, I, I can't see past United. I think United 2 1. Uh, City, Arsenal. Uh, I'm going to see 2 1. I'm going to City as well. I think City will just edge it. They want it more. They've got nothing to play for. If they had something to play for, I would have said yeah. Arsenal, but they just have nothing to play for. But yeah, man, you guys have nothing to play for. So I don't know what you're talking about. No, no, as in outside of the FA Cup. Like, yeah, they yeah. have nothing in the Premier League to play for and the Champions League isn't for a while after the Premiership. So they don't really have to worry about that so much. Yeah. But um, guys, yeah, let us know what you think. If you think that Arsenal could beat Man City or City are going to beat Arsenal, you know, anything like that. Make sure you like, share and subscribe. We are. Peace.